The D sunk Carlton in an easily forgettable game at the G, while after all the noise and conjecture, Jordan Ngoi ends up with three. Luke Bruce, 500th, stakes his claim as an all-time great. Massimo and Marlon win it for their clubs late, and in a game of two halves, Zach Butters and co. make it nine straight. Wrapping up everything from condensed round 12 and to cast our eye towards round 13 and Buddy's 350th, this is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub with former St Kilda number 28, Lee Montagna. Hello, Rabsy. Nice to see the crew again. Former Druin High School captain, Dazzy Thomas. Yes, Rabbit, that's me. And winner of the Media Award at the 2008 TAB Sportsbet Grand Final Breakfast, Damien Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Hello all. <laughs> Hello Damon. Was that a good award, that one? Yeah, I had to go back to that one. Um, yeah, I sat on that main table there at that North Melbourne breakfast. I didn't yeah. know what I was doing. So, yeah. What did you win? What was it? What was it? It was it's called the Media Award I, at the no, 2008 TAB Sports. I, I think it was, and this this will make you laugh. I think it was Media Personality, <laughs> really? which I don't have one. So uh, yeah, and I think Spud <laughs> from memory got a harsh. lot of. Uh, I think Spud got a lot of joy out of that aspect of that one. Yeah, but that's, uh, I'd forgotten that one. There you yeah. go. So, 15 years ago. It just felt like yesterday. Yeah. And number 28. <laughs> I, that didn't come to mind straight away with you. What's that? Number Num 28. Oh, well, at St Kilda. Yeah. Yeah, started it's funny. I mean, numbers are, used to be a strong suit yeah. of mine, but I didn't get that with you. Yeah, I used yeah. to wear the 28. Who had the 11 before you? Craig Callahan. Oh, oh, Callahan. Former, former Fremantle docker that came to the Saints. There you go. How are you, Days? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, Good. going along nicely. Domo, you're a a little bit flustered coming in, couldn't find a car park. Yeah, apologies. I'm, I hate being late. I was only about 90 seconds late, but I was late. So, uh, yes. Are you in the muscle car today? Yeah, I was. So that's Ooh. why you're just sort of driving around a little bit further. You don't want to park it out Too in the close. streets where it might be. You try and get through a season of footy, don't you? With, with, with I reckon the over and underline is about seven parking tickets around, around town. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you get that to me a week. I, I try and keep it to less than 10 a year. Yeah, so. We're... Is the muscle car, and it fascinates me, is it good on fuel? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> to what extent? Oh, it costs like, about eight dollars to start every time it uh, explodes into life. Yeah. Do you and you hate a... spending the money. Where are we going? <laughs> I, I, I can feel an ambush coming. Do what's, you have what's a happening? fuel card? <laughs> no, because I was in the no, paper today, <laughs> and I read Damien Barrett, fifty-two, was convicted in the Supreme Court in Burnie last week on six counts of fraud after he admitted to unlawfully using his employer's fuel card to purchase twenty-four thousand dollars worth of petrol. <laughs> I now, can see why you're asking me, given the car I drive, but how and, was the, the, how's the, name, how's the name spelt? With the A in Damien? It is. Oh, no. Damien John Barrett? Is that the name? Yeah. Is, is no, your middle name John? I won't reveal mine. You can find it out. But it's, it's not John. So there you go. Ah, yeah. I liked it though, Daisy. There, there was, was just, I just, That's actually good. I didn't know where this was going. So. The sleepy, clean persona, the Damien, you know, no tickets and yes. whatnot. All of a sudden, just wiping off the top line of the... Just while you, while you found another one of those, there was um, during the height of that Essendon drug saga... What, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, um, there was a poor person by the name of Damien Barrett in the United States who was copying it from all the Essendon supporters <laughs> on his Twitter handle. And yeah, and I, he had an E in Damien, but it was he actually then started making contact with everyone who was making it. He said, what is a FLOG? Because that's what he's getting caught a lot. He, he said, I've never heard of Essendon. We got him on the, the sounding board one day and he had a really good joke about it, but he copped it for that's months. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah. Very good. Hey, big week, isn't it? We've got to get to Buddy Frank. Oh, yeah. Game 350, only tomorrow, actually, which is going to be an amazing amazing achievement. You are very good at doing the, I suppose, the greatest of all time, and you've been around longer than Daisy and I. For you, where does Buddy sit in the all-time greatest ever players? That's a, without notice. Um, yeah, it was without notice. Yeah, Sorry. No, 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 just, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an answer. What I'll say is, is when he gets instant qualification for the Hall of Fame, it, it should be consideration to make him a legend immediately. Now, I know they don't do that after the initial intake of it, and there's a, a lot of good names who are yet to be legends um, officially, so maybe it won't happen, but he's going to be there, yeah. and, and that, I think, is, is, is testament to, to where he's at. Top you... handful in the modern game. I yeah. think you can comfortably say that, and then overall, if you went to top 20, I think you could comfortably mount a case for that. Top 20? I'm thinking, thinking top five. Oh, I can't of see all, why he's not in the same bracket as Wayne Carey. I'm thinking Wayne Carey, but I'm going back through. You know. Lee Matthews. I mean, who the, are they? You know, the Locket. I mean, I think he sits right well, up at that upper Dunstall, echelon. Dunstall's Dunstall. in Dunstall. that conversation. Yeah, yeah right. He should yeah. be right up in that upper echelon. As you said, he's probably our best in the modern era. So uh, you've got yeah. to be able to put someone from the modern 20, era, I would 20 think. was loosely. It wasn't yeah, 150, yeah. but it was loose. <laughs> it was sort of in and around. But yeah. in terms of, you know, yeah. these things so subjective of, you know, is Lee Matthews the greatest, Gary Ablett Sr. in there yeah. as well. Yeah. All the players at previous Coventry and alike, if you go you back You quickly get enough, to 15 with that, that's, that's without point. Yeah, yeah. thinking too deeply. Yeah. So uh, um, I, I love what he's done. And, and, and I know that the narrative there for a long time was it never worked at Sydney because he didn't win a flag. But he, he played, no, he reached three grand finals, yep. inclusive of last year. And, and again, 
again, I know the narrative is that he hasn't played well in those three losses. Oh, he's played well in a couple. I think he was Sydney's best. Sydney's best in, in, in rolled an ankle. Yeah, one one I reckon. Yep. yeah the, the 16 one he rolled an ankle against the Bulldogs in the first yeah. minute. Yeah. And then 2022, like he, most of his teammates, maybe outside a, of Chad Warner, um, had a bad day. So, you made the great point only a few weeks ago on this show that we should be celebrating him at the back end of his career, not trying to wind him up and yeah. criticise yeah. him for not playing the starring role because he should be third banana up there at the minute. Yeah. He shouldn't be all reliant on him going forward. So it is an opportunity this week to celebrate and ongoing as well. Yeah, yeah. very good. Did we get the buy rounds right? We've got four. The first was on the weekend. Did we condense them down, Damo? Oh. I, I, I'm a bit old school in it. I, I like the isolated one match. If you go back 20 years when the Sydney um, Olympic Stadium was being used for the big games of AFL, and there were a couple of – you played in yeah. them, I think, in – in that, um, in that, uh, maybe not quite. Well, no, no, it was 2000. And, I played a lot at that ground. Yeah, 2002, well three. They, they used to get 80,000, <laughs> high 70,000s. And it was a one off game when they shut the rest of the competition down. And Saturday night was in isolation Sydney versus Collingwood. Again, that's what I go back to. I'd rather it be done that way. Everyone gets a buy in one week apart from one or two games. Industry wide shutdown I'm pushing for. One week. Just we can all nothing, go away and, like and just refresh. We see a lot of the coaches <laughs> claiming mental health. Are you talking about this as a, as a media person who's no, pretty just swamped? No, ev- just everyone. You know, a yeah. chance for players just to go, right, this is it. We get halfway through. We stop. We reset. Uh, you know, no shows. Everyone can just go away, take a breath, because everyone gets a bit grumpy this time of year. All the media likes are we having do. No, back no and doubt forth. We do. and... Yeah, I'm somewhere in between. I think we should have every team have the weekend off. Maybe I'm okay to having a, a big one-off King, game. King's but birthday I think, I don't on think... a Monday, celebrate yeah. the big freeze. I don't think There's the an media industry wide is going to work. Someone will take advantage of that. But I think we could use that week off from the games to have something else, Imagine whether it's a mid-season, a mid-season trade <laughs> period or some other events that still create a lot of interest but gives the football a bit like of breathing space period. to read. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something yeah. else. If you shut it down, have a trade. I know yeah. it says state of origin, but I think we all agree that's, that's, that's done. No. Yeah. But there's other options that they could use in that week or make it a community football week. Everyone goes back to their community clubs, supports local footy, something like that. Make it a real event, yeah. but give the players a week off. When you looked at the fixturing on, on the Sunday just gone, which was the first of the by rounds, it was uh, Richmond versus uh, GWS and North Melbourne Essendon. And on paper, they didn't jump off the screen, off the page. They, but then you watch the games. Really? And, and they, so in that regard, it, it, it worked and they got away with it. But yeah, I mean, there's um, there's only two teams having the bye this week as opposed to the uh, the four mm. last week. Plenty of news kicking around, including Jordan Degoe's three-week suspension and Brody Grundy coming up against his Ooh. former side. Damo's news next on the Midweek Rub. Fair income or Fugazi still to come, plus your round 13 predictions. But Damo, it is news time. Let's start with Jordan Degoe's three-week ban. Yeah, officially signed off on that last night and uh, provided you so the show the uh, suitable amounts of um, remorse and, and sorrow and contrition. You, you seem to get a uh, an lenient outcome. I, I say that because Jordan Degoe naturally and and organically did all that, but then he was able to present that to the tribunal last night. And I've got no doubt it, it had a say in it being three, not four. I was more than comfortable with three. That's what I felt was the right outcome. And I wouldn't have got too worked up if it was four. Yeah, I thought it was going to be four, more so from what we've seen this year, that the tribunal had been leaning towards the sort of upper end of punishment to try and stamp out the concussions and these sort of hits. So I was, I was expecting four, but maybe you're right. Maybe the contrition and the guilty plea uh, has probably worked in yep. his favour and kept it to three as opposed to challenging the suspension, which we've seen others do. And the Shane McAdam incident, which was brought in through as a trial point, I thought that was going to be a good defence for them and that worked in their favour. That was three weeks. That hit was more or less of a footballing action, if you will, ran past the ball, clearly lined the bloke up, whereas Geordie's was argued there was a split-second decision rather mm. than a, a clear choice to pick the bloke off. So happy with three. Again, we wouldn't have been surprised if it was four, but good news for Jordan. So we get to see this play out on a Tuesday night, having had the incident itself on a Saturday. I, I mean, you've probably heard me and probably sick of me saying it, uh, Joey and Days, but why, why can't the game itself and the, and the AFL own that decision? Why, why do we need to have a, an independent match review office and then an independent tribunal on a Tuesday night determine it? Just own it and on, on yeah. Sunday afternoon, put it out three weeks and, and then... I think we will move on then. Created a lot of uh, chatter for three days, yeah. didn't it? Well, uh, all different, all different angles. We went in yeah. all different angles with uh, the hit, but uh, we can move on now, finally. Yeah. Well, we'll have a look now at uh, Monday's game, the Melbourne Collingwood game, where we get to see Brody Grundy playing against the Collingwood Footy Club for the, the first time. I'll leave it to you guys to tell me uh, how it's looked, the grundy gone situation to this point, how it's going to look on Monday. I'm interested to see what response he gets from the players. Because I think a little bit like with the Adam Trelaw situation, when when you choose to leave rather than sort of get walked, which both of those players were, I think there's a different response. But again, the, the mind games will be interesting, whether or not 
And from Brody's point of view, he won't be sure whether or not the boys are going to talk to him, if they're going to try and come after him, whether he what, goes What will up. they do? But you're still well connected uh, there. I, I don't know. I'd be fascinated if they did nothing. Yeah. And I think that wouldn't, you know, Braden Maynard and the like wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't possibly, <laughs> even if instructed, wouldn't be able at some stage <laughs> to start firing shots. But I'm interested to see how Brody goes about it coming up against a Mason Cox, who essentially they're like, well, we don't need you because we have. I expect him to have a massive game. Yeah, I think he'll be treated with respect because, as you said, when you're pushed, when you're a respected he'll player get that's booed, pushed Joey. out of the don't club, worry about I know that. the fans will boo him. But I mean, on, <laughs> yep, from these well, t- from his opposition, his former teammates, I don't think there'll be a lot of niggle. And if it is, I don't understand why he was he was basically asked to leave the football club. Really, um, look. The Grundy Gorn situation for me, whether that actually is a win, we won't know. I think until the finals. Well, do it's, you say it's a win to round twelve? I think both sides are happy. Right um, now. I don't think it's a win or a loss. I think that Melbourne would probably still be eight and four. Whether yeah. gr- 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 I think I think this decision was only going to be determined by what happens with come finals time, whether they mm. win another flag or fall short. For me, that's that's where they were looking to go with him. Where for Collingwood, you can clearly say it's been a massive win, moving him on, not having him in that side, what they've been able to do. So, Gorn um, not being completely banged up at this part of the year, though, is a win. Yeah, We've seen in seasons past, him getting to the mid uh, part with sore backs or knees from so many contests. That's but, sort of been managed a little bit from the load that... But we won't know up. the impact until the Correct. finals time, whether that's actually going to help Gorn and have a dominant final series because yeah. of having Grundy there. If he there. five in a prelim again, we'll give it another massive tick. <laughs> but on that point, though, Dave, six of the previous seven years, and the only year he didn't make All-Australian was when he was injured, Max Gorn. So we get to halfway through of 2023. I don't think he's in that conversation right now. Probably not right now. And but I know he missed a chunk of footy too. Yeah. yeah. And again, is that because he hasn't had to... There's not a reliance on him to be a complete dominant force week in, week out, which makes... Which is good for the team. Which is good for the team. Better for the team, not so good for your individual blazers. But in terms of what's better for the team, you could happily argue that's been the case. Yep. That's right. North Melbourne has now had life uh, for three weeks without Alistair Clarkson um, standing himself aside for mental health reasons. Brett Ratton has coached those three games. Uh, two of the three have been really good. And the, the third one against Collingwood in the middle of the, the Swans lost three weeks ago and the Essendon loss on the weekend by a kick on both occasions. Good form for mm. North Melbourne. Free them up mentally, made some changes. Sheasel from the back line into the middle. Now, he's had access to George Wardlaw, which Clarkson didn't have oh. access to. He's introduced Phillips to the, the mix. It's clearly freed the, the club up in a, in a positive way. And, and one that obviously is unfair to compare with Clarkson, but that's just the, the fact and a simple statement of fact, what's happened under Ratton's watch. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. I think it's fair to say that there's been a weight lifted. Now, no one's going to know, and we're certainly not how much that was weighing down the players. And we've found out since that it was weighing down Clarko and his ability to coach. So it certainly freed them up. We're getting to see more of what I expected from the Kangaroos because they do have a lot of talent. It just needs to now, they just need that club to somehow galvanize and have some some stability and consistency. And I still am pretty bullish that when they do get all that, with the group they've got and add some pieces, it can click and click pretty quickly. It won't be this year, maybe not next year, but they're not far away. And we've seen, as you said, the last three weeks, the talent that they've got, particularly through the midfield. Oh, it, yeah. It's the envy of some teams in a couple of seasons. Wardlaw, especially on the weekend, some of his involvement late and still probably doesn't quite have the pace of AFL footy. We see him get run down a little bit. But once that clicks, his intent at the ball and the man and his hardness in the contest for a first-year player is absolutely sublime. His scouting report, one of his greatest strengths was his competitiveness. When the game was up for grabs, he would always impact. So, and that's what we saw yep. in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Game on the line. And even the Sydney Swans, his first game of footy in the second half, he yeah. was taken up to Luke Parker and was impacting the game. So that's what you're going to get from a kid who, when the game's on the line, he's going to impact it. Will the AFL be giving more cash to North to pump up the salary of Brett Ratton? It's a fair request. Uh, I'd imagine other clubs would be looking at it and thinking, well, no, we start the season under these set set of rules. And and it was North's decision to make Brett Ratton a part-time coach prior to appointing him and elevating him up into the interim capacity. So... It'll, it won't be an easy sell, but I, I can see why they've requested. I, if I'm the AFL, I'm probably asking them to you know, to manage their own finances internally be, without going outside the system because that's the rules. They're the rules. Yep. Um, cricket starts tonight. I thought we'd just oh, move yeah. off footy for one minute. Mm. Are, are we interested in this final of the ICC World Test Championship, uh, Australia versus India at the Oval, and equally as much the Five Ashes Tests to follow as we are the AFL season? Because I'm putting my hand up. I am. Absolutely. Yes. And a good yeah. time yeah. slot too. Eight o'clock, the first, first ball gets set. set. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How good. Get yeah. yourself comfy on the couch. <laughs> the ball the Perfect for me. Kids go to bed, sit down, bottle the red, watch the cricket. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy watching the first session. I'm not going to be one that's going to get up in the middle of the night to yep. keep tracks on it. But 
find uh, find it interesting and see how we go. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good winter of sport. We've got Wimbledon coming up. There's plenty of sport that'll French be happening. French Open Free... on the tail end of yeah, too. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. So it's going to be I'll a good be little month or two. First test, the first Ashes test, day one. You are going. Do you, are want you me going? to wear some Triple M? Are you going? I'm wow. there. That's the oh, last day wow. of my trip in the UK. <laughs> Triple, do you want me Triple M merch? Course we do you want oh, yeah. me in like a Collingwood top? You know, you always see one yeah. Nuffy in the crowd <laughs> yeah. that's got an AFL jersey yes. on. Yes. We can try and sort something out. Yeah. Triple, oh, also, triple M beanie. Triple M beanie. Streak. Why don't you run onto the field? What? <laughs> yeah, some, get yeah, some promotion. It's summer over there. I'll have a go. <laughs> I've also heard that you Jarbo 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll come out to bat. <laughs> you, you've also got an invitation. I have it on good authority to Buckingham Palace. Uh, oh, what? Not what? A, not I offici- should have dropped this off the top. <laughs> what? what? Not officially Buckingham Palace, but where we'll, is we'll it? see where we end up. I've heard oh, you go to Buckingham Palace. That's I've all heard I you're say. going. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just see. Do they know you from Druid? They do. I think they feel sorry for me. <laughs> Hope you shave that dirty mo before you head over there. To <laughs> I think this got me across the line. It's a wazzy, it's a woozy, it's a. Damo, Buddy plays game 350 this weekend. His move to Sydney was a win-win for Sydney, Hawthorne and the AFL. A win-win-win. Yeah, that's fair, Dick. It's a good uh, way to start this uh, segment today, Rebsy. I like that. And and you can say yes, clearly to Sydney. You can say yes, absolutely to the AFL. And Hawthorne would also remind people that after the 2013 season, when he played in his second of that era's flags, they went on to win 14 against his new team, Sydney Swans, and 15 against Fremantle. So, yes, win-win-win. Fair Good start, Rabsy. Couldn't agree more. Spot on. Joey, Brian Myers is the best kick inside 50 in the competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's true, Rabsy. Yes. yes Why are people... you laughing? <laughs> well, he's been the best kick inside in the, inside 50 for about six weeks now, and a few have just jumped on board in the last week or so. So is this your content that others are stealing now? Is that, <laughs> I'm not aware of the background. Jay-Z is that right? stole it. Jay-Z, oh, Jay-Z oh, went with okay. it on Sunday and thought it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I might have mentioned about a month ago okay. that Guy Myers was the best kick, but I don't think Jay knows that yet. But... Daisy, oh, you played true. some time as a small forward. Well, as a forward. Luke yes. Bruce will go down as one of the greatest small forwards in the AFL era. Yeah, that's fair dinkum. Uh, for what he's done, 500 goals in a, a, that position there and it hasn't been put through the midfield as much mm. or, you know, a lot of players who start as a forward then go through chunks of their time. He's been a half forward predominantly his entire career to have 500 goals at the end of it is an absolute amazing achievement. And I think he's well and truly in that conversation, albeit still underrated by a fair few. And does the fact he did it in, in a really successful era, but equally in a non-successful yeah. era too, does that elevate him? Absolutely. And own? arguably, you know, in the successful era, it's easier to play. You have a lot more ball down there. But when he's doing it consistently throughout, and even on the weekend, his side yeah. was going like a busted and he kicked three or four. <laughs> he's one of the, the great small forwards. Well, he's in the bracket. Eddie Betts kicked over 600 and yep. was the number one guy score assist. We looked it up. Uh, the number one goal assist player in the comp up until uh, in history, up until Tom Hawkins, I think, will go past him. And then Stephen Milne kicked 574 goals. But I think the premiership gave away none. And no, exactly <laughs> right. Was, and uh, Luke Bruce did with the four the flags and over five hundred. <laughs> number one barbecue. Absolutely. <laughs> Damo, for the first time ever, we have to take Gold Coast seriously. For Gazi at this stage. Oh, for Gazi at this stage, because I took them seriously last year at, at this very yeah, same point in time. They were six and six last year. They went to seven and six, mm. and I took them very seriously, and they fell away. I've been burnt yep. for Gazi. Uh, Daisy <laughs> Bailey Humphrey should be the rising star favourite. Oh, Fugazi. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a, a great crop, which is good, and we don't usually say that. I think we expected Will Ashcroft to come in and uh, be clearly dominant in Nick Dacos style, but also we've seen Sheasel as well in there. There's been some other great contributors in and around that. It's a bloody good draft year and a, a good. Rising star crop. Fagazi for now. He's the flavour of the month, but Sheasel and uh, Ashcroft and even Mitch Owens have got a better body of work yeah. behind them up until this point. Not saying you can't win it because we've still got 11 games to go, 12 games to go, It'd but be... you're not, not quite yet. Well contested at the end of the year to see who actually is in front because right now you could mount a case yeah, for four yeah. or five. Yeah. No, I was just going to ask you um, where, where you did put him. Is it, is it third or, f- or at least equal fourth with Mo ones? Yeah, if and, you're saying it, if, you, if you were voting right now yeah, today, yeah. I would still have Sheasel and Ashcroft one and two. Okay. Um, but by the end He's of the coming year, coming hard, isn't he? Right come, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joey, Essendon will break their finals win drought this season. <laughs> Well, that's for Garzi. Oh, <laughs> you hate him. You, you try to get him. me to say will. I can't guarantee it. I can't guarantee. This is as good a chance as any for them. They right. should, with their run home, play finals. Mm-hmm. Now, who they get in the first week of finals, are they going to be good enough if they finish eighth and come up against uh, 
Port Adelaide or a Western Bulldogs or Geelong. Too hard to say they will win, but they will have as good a chance as they've had in a long, long time. Daisy, Tex Walker's 250th game this Saturday. He ranks amongst the greatest Crows ever. Yeah, that's fair dinkum as well. Um, to all-time leading goal kicker for the football club, that speaks for itself. And also just the transformation of where he was a year and a half ago. He's uh, massive stuff up off field, uh, on field, I should say, and how he's responded from that in going about his work and earning the respect of the community, his football club, and then the wide AFL community and football fans in general back has been first rate. So I think there's no doubt that when you talk about the Adelaide Crows, you have to talk about Tex Walker as one of their greats. Damo, West Coast probably shouldn't have tweeted about Jordan Degoli being sent straight to the tribunal, but they definitely shouldn't have deleted the tweet. I'm just trying to work out what I'm actually meant to respond Answer to here. First. Answer Should they have, um, is the tweet, no, Was the tweet okay? The tweet was absolutely okay. So, so that part of it is for Ghazi. I, I had no issue with it. It, it, it just had a very simple um, photo of the incident yeah. and the statement off to the tribunal. It's factually correct. Yeah. I, I think they're allowed to do that. Um, the retreat and the apology for it. No, that that's that's the that's also for Gazi because what, why would you need to backtrack on it? Yeah, I, 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 I was surprised it. by it. I was interested at the comments Dom Sheed made. It's saying you should get a month or two. Yeah, but did you hear though? That is some talk that he might have just actually said the wrong thing. He meant a month or so. Yeah, and he said a month or two well, instead of a well, month or so. Like I don't think he literally uh, yeah, thought yeah. he was going to get eight weeks. But you don't. Why comment on it? Because he was asked a question in an interview post game. Mm. Mm. Anyway, yeah. no, I, I heard that too. Having yeah. having read it first, yeah. and I think there's a context to it yeah. that the print version and the text version doesn't yeah. have. But. Having said that, he did say it, did and, say it. Yeah. and there was also, you know, the uh, other commentary from the club itself, and, and then the backing away and the retreating when when they missed the moment. I mean, I get missing the moment because I think the commentators oh. missed it. I missed it as a viewer. I saw the incident, but then didn't think much Surely of it. Surely, somebody, if, if you, a man goes down. No, but if you watch, I watched the extended after the hit. Yeah. Tim Kelly goes over to him and tries to pick the kid up, almost thinking he'd been winded. Almost right. like he grabbed him by the collar for a good five seconds, almost like get up, get up. Gee. So I think everyone around thought it was almost a genuine like fair Winding. bump. Yeah. No one must have really known it got him in the head because you wouldn't try and pick up a kid if he's got any sort of concussion. So maybe that explains a little bit of why I still, no West Coast players remonstrate. If that was in, and the teams that I played in, there'd be questions asked saying, who got him? Who, where, where did this, what's happened? What like would even Brayden if you didn't Maynard have done if that was been, on the reverse for and, Jordan Ngoi? No, he would have just would've taken been, them all 22 down just to be sure. Correct. <laughs> I remember when uh, Sherrod Wellingham cleaned up Cade Simpson back with the flight MCG, absolutely suitcased him, took his eyes off the footy and he, Scotland, came and tried to kill He Shaw. And He Shaw's going, it wasn't me. It was him. It was him. But to your point, just go after somebody. Start the remonstration. Yeah. We're going to play some audio, Joey Montagna. Don't like this, Burn. If the, oh, he's going around 25 the corner, out the front. He's turning our game into a shamble. 25 metres out directly in front, kicking around the corner. Don't like it. It's not football. Should be outlawed. Finn Lason has a go and he oh, misses. Russell. Could have just kicked the drop punt. Very easy thing. He's a good drop punt kick, and this is bullshit. This could not be happening. <laughs> BT is getting dangerously close to honing in on Chiefs territory for his set shot snap comments. Uh, yeah, that's that's fair income. BT, very old school. Won't go too far calling him a dinosaur. He's still getting his head around oh, what an intercept oh, mark oh, is. No, no, He's still it. very old school with his football. He doesn't like intercept marks. He doesn't like snaps. He doesn't like anything modern about the game, BT. So he's just bored around getting into grumpy BT. But we love it when grumpy BT's in action. That's when he's at his best. I'm proposing that the AFL, and going with BT on this one, the Richmond theory that if you go from goalpost to the 50, there's a line, and anywhere outside of that, you're allowed to snap. That was their first take of it. Make that an actual rule. You, can, you have to kick a set shot from in between the tram tracks. I like that. <laughs> Speaking of BT and honing in on territory, Damo. Daisy Thomas's mustache is Ooh. his first move into the transition to the new Brian Taylor. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you it's see that? Gazi. I don't know what you're doing with it, Daisy. And I was asked to comment on it the other day. And as I said, I feel as though I've got to know you well enough to yep. be honest. And I, and I don't like it. <laughs> yep. um, That's fair enough. But yeah, I, I don't see a BT link with it though. No. Mick Mouldhouse, BT, both very strong <laughs> figures in the footballing world. Just trying to get some credit over here, Damo. <laughs> It's uh, obviously not so working. It's more John Newcomb, though, than those oh, two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. Daisy Thomas, have a listen to this. Mitch Lewis just came through, attacked the footy like a good forward should, came through, the, parted uh, the contest there, found the handball option. 
He was the only one that really went on it. Came Farrell would want his time again. He just sort of paused and, and waited for the ball to bounce. And Gee, could you speak any more dully of them? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not. He's got the shit. Yeah, really Something just, we've got to find uh, out. You, I oh told you, it's boy, Sam Mitchell. What be. happens with Boring you and Sam Mitchell? More, more Cliff and Hawthorne. Can't just be a running with Sam Hawthorne. Mitchell creating all this. Kick the goal. <laughs> Daisy, if Tom Rockcliffe wants to run with the big boys on the Saturday rub, he needs to provide more energy than that. Yeah, that's fair, Nick. Uh, maybe some inflections at some point, maybe just like get rid of the monotone, yep. take a pause, make a different point. But also the vendetta he's got against um, Sam Mitchell. It was <laughs> really evident on obvious. the way. He was just giving Hawth on nothing. And, and as soon history? as Port got it, he was up and about. Yeah. I think JB got to the bottom of it. Something in and around there was going to be a trade. I think he met with Graham Wright before yeah. he moved at to Hawthorne. Port Adelaide at yeah. Hawthorne. And, and they went with Ty Vickery instead no. of... <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably understandably why he's a bit flat. But, uh, come on, Rock. Lift a little bit. Find something. You know what? He needs to get a thesaurus like me. Just a chance to elevate yourself. Bring something different than, uh, yeah, boring the pants off everyone. <laughs> Damo, our man Joey Montagna is worried about Friday huddle trying to fracture the Sunday rub. Ooh. But he might actually do it himself. Let's go to the back row first. We've got Joey Montagna and Daisy Thomas. G'day, Joey. Hello, Baz. Nice to be here. This is my favourite commentary Ooh. team, actually. Oh. oh. <laughs> what Barry us? Denner. What, what about us? You can't go past Baz. Love working with Barry Denner. I was just trying to give everyone a compliment in there. A bit of a pump up, and mm. it's been used against me, so as we do. Mm. Triple M style. Yeah, fair enough. So that's fair dinkum. Well, it gets away with his commentary team. We, we, we on the Widwick Rub are not commentating the but game. But the Sundays, so. the Sunday Rub, all conquering. Yeah. He just <laughs> poo pooed on that. The number one in the race, yeah. as we just saw. So you're, you're yeah. dirty too. <laughs> I'm flat yeah, okay. well, as a bitch. You got more reason to be dirty yeah. than I do. Yeah. Even though you were part of that Saturday team. I was part. I, <laughs> yeah. I said I enjoyed working with them. I didn't go start throwing around that I loved them all and I want to give them all kisses and cuddles. Yeah. Right. Well, straighten up for the last one. Damo, Ange Postacoglu's move to Tottenham is the biggest Australian sporting story of the last decade. Question without notice. I'm just trying to think what else it would have to be. It, it, yeah, I'm going to go feed income and Ooh. try and pull it apart right now. But it's it's at least in the conversation. I would have thought with what he's done and been able to achieve, I'm going to be pulled apart no, here. I no, agree. I no, I agree. No, I think yeah, that's hard. To, what, yep. what are some of the other biggest Australian sporting? Ash Barty. Uh, I asked the questions. Yeah. I don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ash Barty Sam was the Kerr, first thing I went to. Sam Kerr. Anyway, yeah, well, I think uh, to Daisy good, kicking five for the parade in. gives everyone that doesn't really follow the uh, the EPL a team to follow now. Oh, I should, mm. Maybe should have asked that question a little bit earlier because we ended on a flat note, but that's all right. <laughs> Leave that one out of the radio. Predictions that one out. still to come. <laughs> this is Triple M 40s midweek rub. Before we get all your predictions, let's have a look at last week, Damo. Well, I'll go Melbourne against Carlton because Carlton's let me down so many times. <laughs> Daisy Thomas, Port to beat Hawthorne is my certainty. <laughs> Daisy Thomas is <laughs> the Oracle. Oh, this has to stop. This. They could have been played 10 minutes into that game. That's Oracle stuff, Damo. Yeah, no, no, don't this worry. This is getting true. so boring, your certainty. <laughs> oh, Joey Montagna. This is my certainty, the Western Bulldogs, to win at Marvel oh. Stadium. Cats are only just going. We know they've got injuries, but they are struggling. Bulldogs, uh, after a little blip last week, will bounce back and win. Can you believe I got six out of seven tips last week? The only one I got wrong was the Western yes, Bulldogs. No, I can't believe that. Uh, <laughs> disappointing. They they should be disappointed. That's this. We didn't talk about the Bulldogs, Damo, but mm. that was a very disappointing for them. That was their chance to really stick the boots in, prove that they're a top four team, dominate a team that's bullied them in the past. They couldn't get it done. Well done to the Cats. Great effort. Uh, so kicking off, Sydney versus St. Kilda tomorrow night at the SCG. Big My game. outsider will win this St Kilda. I think that Rossi will get them back on track. They had a couple of little down games. Max King back in form. They'll sharpen up defensively and around the contest. And I think the Saints can cause an upset. Oh, I'm going fairy tale. Buddy 350. Surely they get up. The blood's culture. Buddy kicks eight. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. Yeah, I'm going the Swans to uh, Rampy back as we speak. That's the plan anyway. And I like how they've held themselves together despite having no back line to speak of for most of the first half. Huge game on Friday night. The Western Bulldogs versus Port Adelaide. If the Power win, it is a club record 10th straight, Joey. Yes, it will be. Um... I want to say the dogs are a chance, but I've lost a bit of faith in them. So I'm going to stick with Port Adelaide, but I, eventually I think their run's going to come to an end. And the dogs, we know their best is good enough, Damo. They just they're frustrate hard us. To catch. Two in a row. They're hard to catch. Yeah, they yeah. Are. They four in a row, then lost two in a yeah. row. Games they hard probably should have won. The four they won. There was games there they probably shouldn't have. They're very hard to catch. Port Adelaide, you purely on form. You yeah. can't tip against them. Of course. Yeah, until this uh, wave uh, decreases in its size, I'm, I'm all over it, uh, the Port Adelaide uh, 
surge. So, yeah, power for me. Hawthorne versus Brisbane. Yeah. Not their happy hunting ground, the Lions, nah, at the MCG. Brisbane will win that. They're not going to lose that. Agree. Yep. Adelaide versus West Coast at the Adelaide Oval. Texas two nah. fiftieth. Can he fairy tale kick eight? Uh, he can kick more than eight. If Charlie <laughs> kick nine, uh, the Crows are humming. Their forward line potent. I think they'll absolutely open them up. Look for eight plus. Rankin will kick five. Ooh, and, nice. and back at the Adelaide Oval where they, they do win. They've only won one away from there. And that was in, in Tassie. Luckily, against Hawthorne. So, yeah, that, that's uh, it's an easy win for the Crows. Fremantle, who you work at, versus Richmond, who your mate's <laughs> coaching at, Joey. Uh, Freo, my certainties. They yes. are flying. They will win. Is that your certainty too? Or that three? is my certainty what? as well. What? Three banger. Fremantle Uh-oh. to beat Richmond. Uh-oh. Yes. We've done this once before yeah. this year, and we got, and we up, got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think Richmond <laughs> beat win. up after their uh, strong win against GWS. Then having to fly to Perth. Fremantle fresh off a bye. There you go. Shane Amore. North Melbourne versus the Giants down at Blundstone Arena, Joey. Got to give the Kangas a chance in this one. Giants have been playing great footy all year. They just have a lot of honourable losses. They would expect a win. But North Melbourne, I like what they're doing. I'm giving them a chance. Being conservative with the tip with GWS, but agree with Joey. North, big chance. Yeah, making a fool of myself. I think GWS comfortably. Okay. Carlton versus Essendon. A huge game in the context of the season for both clubs. Joey's already tipped Essendon to break their finals hoodoo this yeah. year. Ha. I'm one of those suckers. If I go to the casino days in playing roulette and I see that it's eight blacks in a row, I'm the guy that goes, it has to be red next. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be red next, streak. even though it's got no relevance whatsoever. Yeah. I'm that sucker. So yeah. that's why I think Carlton eventually are going to win, Damo. They are eventually going to win one. It's been eight blacks in a row, yep. seven out of eight blacks in a row. I'm going red eventually. Carlton can cause an upset. And I'm going to stupidly follow you <laughs> know, down this path. <laughs> and I'm going for Carlton too, oh having God. sworn off them three weeks ago, never again. <laughs> one last time for all of us, the Blues I'm oh. going to tip. <laughs> and if they do not show that's, something, that's... if they don't win this game, yeah. I will never tip them ever again. <laughs> Ever. I'll, I'll come with you. In the entirety you. of my Actually, tipping oh, career yeah. and hopefully long media career, yep. they are done. If they lose this one, never again. Yep. It's the roulette theory. This I, year. I, I did say that three weeks ago. And here I am. Here <laughs> I am. Gone with Carlton time. to win. Yeah. And the final game of the round, the big freeze game on King's birthday, Melbourne versus Collingwood. This is going to be a cracker. Can't wait. Just the narrative if Melbourne can can win this one. Uh, I think they can. Their defence is elite. No Dugowie. Maybe a couple of other injuries. Always hard to tip against the Pies, but I think Melbourne will prove themselves to be right up there in the premiership race with Collingwood. Cracking game, uh, tipping the Pies, just because I have to pick somebody. A result either way wouldn't shock, but a day that's bigger than football. So if you can, get out there and buy a beanie and support the great cause. Nicely said. Collingwood for me. There you go. Your certainty is all Fremantle oh. and your outsider is all Carlton. Nups and Kilda for me, my outsider. Right on. Well, catch every game across round 13 on Triple M starting with tomorrow night's clash between Sydney and St Kilda live from the SCG at 7 p.m. with BT, not you, the actual uh-huh. BT, Brad Seymour, Tom Rockcliffe, <laughs> Emma Friedman, and Ethan Meldrum. Freedy. Frio.